Welcome back to part two of module 10, lesson five, where we continue our study into the probability of compound events. When conducting a probability experiment, the theoretical probability of the compound event is the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes to the total number of outcomes in the sample space. In words, what does that mean? Well, it means right there the same exact thing we just said. I think that's like word for word. As a ratio, it's the same exact formula we've been working with throughout this whole module. The probability of the event is equal to the favorable outcomes divided by the total outcomes. NFO divided by TO is what I expect to see you write on your homework. A coin, coin is tossed and then a number cube labeled 1 through 6 is rolled. The tree diagram shows the sample space and identifies the outcome of tossing a tails followed by rolling a 6. The tree diagram can and under, yep, the whole thing's there. A tree diagram can be used to find the theoretical probability of this compound event. So we're going to drag the appropriate values of, into the com, um, to complete the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes to the total number of outcomes. And if you look down here, zoom out some, there's only one time that you got both a tails and a six. So the number of favorable outcomes is going to be one. And the total number of outcomes, that's going to be 12 because you had six outcomes for the tails and six outcomes for the heads. Check our answer. One out of 12. Yes, it really is that simple to do this. For example number three, we have two number cubes. Both of them are numbered one through six. And it wants to know what's the probability of rolling a sum of nine, with sum of course being the answer to an addition problem. So what's the probability of all the rolls combined adding up to equal nine? Now you're looking at a pretty intense tree diagram here. So let's take a look and see how they actually went through this. Follow through the sample space, they made a table instead. Tables are a great option for this because you can see if they rolled a one on the first cube, they could roll a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six on the second cube. If they rolled a two on the first cube, they could roll a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six on the second cube all the way down until you have a total of 36 different possible outcomes here. So there are 36 outcomes and the table shows blank outcomes resulting in a sum of nine. Well, let's call our men. A sum of nine we're gonna have, let's see here, we have, that's only gonna get me up to eight. And here we got a three and six is equal to nine. A four and five is equal to nine. A five and four is equal to nine. And a six and three is equal to nine. I believe those are the only ones that equal nine. So I'm gonna pick the four. And I'm going to check the top answer. I'm going to check the bottom answer. And so right now we have found that 4 out of the 36 possible outcomes is going to equal to 9. Now we're going to actually find the probability. Remember you need to write the formula first. P event equals NFO divided by TFO. Number of favorable outcomes divided by total outcomes. The sum of the 9 when we plug it in is going to be end up being 4. The total number of outcomes ended up being 36. That is not in simplest form, though. We always write our fractions in simplest form, which means you have a 1 out of 9 chance of getting a sum of 9 on the roll of the cubes. And that would take and divide out to be 0 0.111 repeating, also known as 11.1% for your final answer. So the probability of rolling a 9 is going to be a 1 out of 9 chance except that or about 11.1 percent check it and you're done easy math and it is once again time for you to pause the video and work extra practice one on your own go ahead and do that suppose that you spin a spinner with four equal sizes the size sections labeled one through four and then randomly choose a marble from a bag containing one red and one green marble what is the probability of landing on a number greater than one and choosing a red marble write your answer as a fraction so i've set up a table to do this one sometimes tables are just simpler than tree diagrams 
So on my table, I have my rows set up as my one, two, three, and four. I have my columns set up as my red and green. So what are my possible combinations gonna be? Well, I could get a one red, a two red, a three red, and a four red. Or I could get a one green, two green, and it should be more of a G here, a three green, and a four green. Now we're looking for a number that is greater than one and choosing a red marble. So which ones are gonna fall into that category? Well, it has to be in the red section. A two, a three, and a four are all numbers greater than one, and they all have the red marble. So it's gonna be three out of eight. Actually, let's write our formula first. Do it, do it properly here. So we're gonna have a probability of the event is equal to the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total outcomes and the event we want is going to be greater than a one and a red and of course the number of favorable outcomes we found was three out of eight total so three eighths is going to be our final answer we're going to jump back over to the textbook type in our answer as a fraction three out of eight accept and check our answer is correct and this is a supporting work we would need to have to support our answer. We can't just throw down an answer unless we have some good, high-quality supporting work to go with it. We are almost done. We've got two resources left to go. For this one, we have the two coins being tossed and a number cube labeled 1 through 6 being rolled. So we're looking at three different events taking place. Coin 1, coin 2, and the number cube. What's the probability of tossing heads at least once and rolling an even number? Let's find out about that. So we're going to get in here, and how are they going to do it? They're going to find their sample space and, um, and their favorable outcomes. It looks like they're going for a tree diagram. I don't know why they're calling it a tree diagram when it boops sideways. That tree got hit by a hurricane or something. So here you can take and see you have heads or tails on the first coin, and then that's going to go to heads or tails on the second coin. That's going to go to a one through a six on a number cube. Sometimes drawing these tree diagrams are not a lot of fun. And that will follow itself all the way out to a sample space, which they didn't really show, but I really wish they had. Oh, there's your sample space right there. So your sample space is showing the favorable outcomes, but it did not show the unfavorable outcomes. Your sample space needs to show all of them, not just the winners. When you look at this, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine favorable outcomes. So we can take right here and say that nine of the outcomes are gonna be favorable. Check that. And they're probably going to show all the rest of them that here. Mm, nope, they didn't. There was 24 outcomes total, so 9 out of 24. That simplified down to be a 3 out of 8 chance. Go ahead and zoom in a little so you can see that. And 3 eighths also is known as 0 0.375, written as a decimal if you divided it out. And that is going to equate to the percent of 37.5. You change a decimal to a percent by bouncing it two spaces to the right and dropping the adding a percent sign. That's all there is to doing that one. The hardest part on this problem is going to be making that tree diagram because that tree diagram, that's an awful lot of things for you to have to write down there. Once again, it's going to be your turn. You're on extra example number four. We want to take and toss a coin four times. You need to either make a tree diagram or a table to show your outcomes on this. And then from there, we're going to find out what the probability of tossing a tails is at least twice. I would encourage a tree diagram on this one. That's the way I'm going to do it when it's my turn. All right, folks, I was really nice to you, and I did not make you sit down and watch me write that entire tree diagram out. But you can see my first coins are heads or tails, my second coins are heads or tails, my third coins are heads or tails, and my fourth coins are heads or tails. And the question wants to know the probability of getting a tails at least twice. So let's find them. This one here is the first time we see it. Come on, let's see if my computer will catch up. There you go. That one's got twice. 
that one's got twice, that one's got twice, this one has twice, that one has twice, that's three times, this one's three times, twice, three times, three times, and four times. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times that it is going to be occur at least twice. Now we're going to take and zoom and see if we move it up a little bit. We're going to write our formula here. here. The formula is going to be the P of event is equal to the number of favorable outcomes over the total outcomes. The event we're looking for is tells greater than or equal to 2 and we had that, what did we say? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 times that that occurred out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That answer is already in simplest terms. That's our supporting work. Jump back over here to the document. We're going to type in our answer. Oh, they want it as a percent, so hold on, let's work on that. To find the percent, we need to take the first number goes in the house, the second number, 16, goes out of the house, 16 goes into 11, zero times, and that's in our decimal is in the zero, and bring the decimal straight up, 16 is going to go into that. I'm going to try six times. Six times six is going to be 36. Six times one is going to be 60, plus three is going to be 90, and that's going to end up leaving me with... 14 left over when I do some borrowing. Actually, no, it's not 14. Yeah, 14 left over to do some borrowing. And it's in another zero and bring it down. 16 is going to go into 140. I'm going to take that and I'm going to try seven times, eight times. Let's try nine times, see what happens. Nine times six is going to be 54. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 5 is going to be, uh-oh, 9 is not the answer. The correct answer is going to end up being 8 times there. So let's take and put in an 8. 8 times 6 is 48. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is going to give me 12. And when I do my subtraction here, that's going to give me a 2 and a 1, 12 left over. And X and another 0 and bring it down. That one is going to be, I'm going to take and try a 7. 7 times 6 is 42. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 4 is 11. And that will end up giving me, when I do my borrowing here, 8 left over. That's going to be about 68.7% when we bounce our decimal two spaces to the right and add our percent sign. Come back over here. Um, we're going to take and type in. It doesn't really say what to do, so let's see what happens. 68.7, check the answer, and they said up. Oh, they wanted to go to the hundredth place. They didn't tell us what decimal place to go to, so I stopped at the tenths because that's what they've been doing before. That is it for this lesson. Get busy working on your homework. Let me know what questions you have in class tomorrow.